Hello, and welcome to this secret secure location just outside Stratford-upon-Avon. We are here with PBD member Tom Morrison-Jones of Acuria Spree, and we have a very interesting JDM car for you. Uh, you may remember that not that long ago, we sent out a request to all our readers for interesting Japanese cars. And we were thinking NSXs, we were thinking R32s and other Skylines. And then we got a call from somebody called Adrian, who is looking after his daughter's car, which we simply couldn't turn down. It is the most exciting Japanese car you have ever seen. It is exceptionally butch. Um, and here to introduce it is Tom himself. Thanks, Bert. Well, I can safely say we've never seen one of these before um, in a Curious Spree. Um, it is, of course, uh, the Nissan Figaro, um, based on the Nissan Micra and um, with a pretty uh, nice one-litre turbocharged engine. As you say, the car um, has been kept in very good order by the PVD reader, um, but there are a couple of surfaces um, in particular that uh, we think we can make an improvement on. Uh, the first one being the uh, white fabric roof. So um, these things came with a sort of a, a fold back roof. It's not a full convertible, but it looks like it goes, it can go back into that kind of mini that's boot right, thing, can't yeah, it? Yeah, similar to maybe a Fiat 500C. Absolutely, absolutely. And I can see it's, it's white, but it's not as white as the surrounding paint. So we reckon we can get that right back to a, to a bright white and then seal it in with something, I guess? Yeah, we, we wouldn't um, agree to do it unless we thought we could uh, make it uh, pretty good. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. And then uh, you were saying something about the front headlights as well need to do. Yeah, so on um, the headlight surrounds, we've got some eyebrows. We believe that they're different uh, materials from here to here to here. Um, but we've already checked, this is definitely um, chrome plated steel, we checked mm -hmm. that with a magnet um, and it's been um, subject to the elements over its life, um, it's ultraviolet um, but noticeably there are quite a few swirls in there. Yeah, and it's kind of physical abrasion I guess? Yeah, I'm guessing you know, with the best intentions, um, you know, the car has been washed um, mm -hmm. over its life um, and you know, some contamination has been dragged across it. And, and do you uh, think in incorrect wash techniques perhaps might have contributed to Possibly, yes. yes. Certainly. You can see that on other areas of the car and um, for some reason it's quite um, prevalent on, on this area too. So what are we actually going to do to correct these? What, what kind of equipment and, and chemicals are you going to use? Um, I'm going to choose to use a um, Rupri's hybrid um, The hybrid Nano. The hybrid yes. nano machine. The electric toothbrushes. I'm That's it, it, yeah, with a long reach neck. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably have it on um, a rotary setting with quite a soft pad, a yellow pad. Um, and the compound, uh, the, the, the substance we're going to use is um, simply autoglim metal polish. Just um, which and that's, a, that's how would you say in terms of aggression? It's less aggressive than say autosol? I would say so, yes. Um, um, it's pretty safe um, thing to use, nice to work with. We will get some splatter, but we can clear that up afterwards. Absolutely, and I imagine with a, a polish like that, it's partly is the physical abrasion, but then there's also a solvent chemical abrasion element to it as well, which will hopefully, I guess, bring it right back and be nearly as glossy as this plastic surround. Let's see. That's the hope. Well, let's have a go. <laughs> So, uh, we've now got the light prepared. You'll notice that we have taped this, and the reason is the head of the polisher could well damage the edge of this uh, plastic, uh, chrome-plated plastic, so we've done that to protect it. Um, there might be a little bit of polished splatter, but that's normal. You can just wipe that up, and that's not a problem as long as it's done carefully. So, let's have a look at this autoglim bottle you're using here. So, it is literally autoglim metal polish. You've, I saw you shaking it quite frantically for quite yeah. a long time. Um, so that's probably a thing, particularly anything which has got uh, a risk of separating. So if it's got solids in or if it's got a kind of a solvent level and non-solvent level, uh, you need to shake it well before use. Uh, and then we're using here the Long Neck Hybrid Nano uh, on a yellow pad by the looks of it. Now, this machine, I believe, uh, can be run by battery power or by mains. Yes, it can. Yep. I'm guessing we've got a plug right there. It makes more sense yep, to run it by indeed. mains. Um, and then what's, what speed are you going to run it on? Um, I tend to start low and work my way up if I feel I need more. So we'll, we'll start on the lowest speed, which is one. Brilliant. OK, let's have a look. OK. And I'm just going to smear it around to try um, and reduce the splatter. How, how much polish did you put on there initially? Just um, the well, more came out than I wanted. Um, uh, which happens all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just took some away with my finger and wiped well, it. It's a foam pad, so it kind of it does Indeed, yeah. saturate a bit. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we're on setting one. Okay. Just a, a word of warning: if you're at home, is if you're standing position like I am, you want to be wearing safety goggles because any splatter compound ain't great for the face or the eyes particularly. Um, so it's just a little health and safety warning. Carry it away. Okay. So I see you're constantly keeping it moving. Yeah, I can see it's doing some good work, but I can see that it's probably going to take more than one attempt. Yeah. Which um, is not a big surprise. But it's always better, I guess, to do two gentle attempts than to go in too hard, too fast. Exactly, yeah. And I can see that black is appearing on the pad, and that's carbonisation of the polish, I'd imagine. 
Yeah, yeah and um, it's also going all over the pink paintwork there, so I'll deal with that later. And, or is that, is that could also be, I guess, a metal oxide coming off the top? Yes, it could, yes. It's a lovely quiet machine, that hydro, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's very easy to work with too. So, um, I'm not really sure how we did things like this before, <laughs> but we did. <laughs> well, I suppose you would have a, a rotary with a, with a bar, wouldn't you, in the old days? Yeah, and, and just very sore fingers. <laughs> if I buff that off now, we'll see that it's... Um, yeah, so this better. is, after one stage, there's certainly a gloss improvement there. Yeah, it's still... It's much more mirror-like. I can still see some marks. Yeah. We've still got some heavier staining and stuff like that. I wonder whether we'll get rid of those. Sometimes, of course, it's a matter of doing what you can do. You know, if you can't get it completely perfect, however hard you try, you're better off actually standing back from it, saying, well, that's the improvement we can do, and not aiming for 100% perfection, because sometimes it's just not possible. So we can go for another attempt, maybe at a slightly higher speed. Okay. Again, more has come out than I want, so I'm just going to take some away. Were you sensing much heat being produced? I mean, no, hardly any, no. Good. Generally speaking, if you're producing a lot of heat on something like this, you need to slow down and reduce your pressure. Um, so it's always good just to keep an eye on things and also be careful when testing for heat. Don't just stick your finger on there in the hope in case it is very hot and then you could do some injury. So again, with the hybrid, is it's got two primary modes. One is uh, what we call a DA, dual action. So it oscillates off center, uh, or how we're using it now, which is as a straightforward rotary. Mm -hmm. And there are various different sort of times that you'd use each mode. Why did you choose the rotary here? Just through trial and error um, over the time we've had this machine. Um, we didn't think it would be the right call, but um, we tend to find that a rotary setting with a softer pad just gets better results for us. Mm -hmm. It may be a personal thing, but... Well, that's yeah. a perfect example about experience with detailing, is that you can read as many manuals and instructions as you like, but sometimes it's a matter of just having a go. Uh, obviously, don't have a go on customers' cars. You know, if you've got your own car at home, that's great. Uh, always be cautious. Uh, but when it comes to a experienced detailer like Tom, you're paying really when it comes to his time for his experience. For how long have you been in the trade now? Um, we've been doing this um, work for, we're in our fourth year now. Four years. Yeah. Um, so our background has been in family dealerships, um, which yeah, involves cleaning and valeting, um, but mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to go to the next level. So go sort of upper class, yeah. yeah. Well, that's certainly an improvement. There are still some marks in there, aren't there? There are, and um, so that your next decision really is whether you go to a, a more aggressive level. pad. Because we've got the pitting and stuff yeah. here, which suggests to me that maybe it would make sense to be a bit more cautious. I could improve one aspect, but actually um, have a negative that. outcome on the other, on another aspect of it, so I'm yeah. inclined to leave it at that. Leave it there and we'll um, put some autobahn on it. Yeah, we can protect it with Swiss Max autobahn next. Brilliant, okay. So we've gone over this twice and we've made some visual improvements, certainly. We found the other, the other light did rather better and this one's probably an, either an older part or maybe it's sort of seen more, more abuse on this side of the car. But anyway, it's certainly an improvement and the next step is to protect it. So Tom's decided we should use autobahn or autobahn, I suppose it should be pronounced. Um, which is made by Swiss Fax. Um, and so what's the idea of putting this wax on there? What will this protect the metal from? Um, the elements in, in short. Um, so Autobahn has PTFE within it. Which is um, Teflon, which, which is, is obviously a brand name belonging to DuPont. Uh, yeah, and um, that's going to help it against the elements um, more than a, a, a standard Swiss Fax wax. So we're talking about uh, protection against water ingress, perhaps in the, in the short term, I guess, mm -hmm. and UV damage as well, particularly. It's going to have lots of UV filters in there. Um, so it'll essentially keep it shinier for longer. So we've applied the wax now, and I can see it's hazing off nicely. This curing process, how long would you leave it? Um, a lot depends on whether you know, you're know you outside and the sun's shining or if you're in a nice environment like this that's um, relatively stable. Um, I'd be inclined to leave that for about 20 minutes before I come back and buff it off. 20 minutes. It's interesting, lots of waxes will have on the back of the tin different cure times. Uh, but, of course, it does depend on the environment. And again, this kind of goes back to detailer experience, doesn't it? Is mm -hmm. that, um, if you're out in, in, on a hot surface in bright sun, not that you really should be waxing anything on bright sun, um, it will essentially cure, which is where all the solvents evaporate, uh, leaving the substrate much, much quicker 
um, than if it's in a nice sort of cool environment on a cool surface. So 20 minutes might seem like quite a long time. Certainly if you're using uh, quite a lot of waxes on paintwork and left it for 20 minutes, you'd then end up like Popeye trying to get it off again. Um, but this one, 20 minutes, it will do its job and then we'll be able to buff it off and we'll come back again, buff it off and we'll see um, the kind of end result, I guess. Okay. So, Tom, while the uh, wax, the autobahn, is curing on the headlight lens, uh, you're going to show us how to do this roof. Yep, that's right, and um, we're going to use a product from CarPro to clean it, and mm -hmm. then when we've cleaned it, we're going to use another product from CarPro to protect it. Um, so the product that we're going to clean it with is called CarPro Inside, um, and we've got a couple of different brushes, one's firmer than the other, um, and these things combined, I think, will be um, effective but kind um, to what is... Um, not delicate, but it, it's something I don't want to get brittle. Mm. Um, I mean, I suppose it's, 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 it's how old is it? 1991. So that's uh, it's a consideration. It's, yeah, it's 26, <laughs> 27 years old. Cool. OK, so should we see how this works? And so I'm guessing you'll be spraying straight on to the vinyl. Um, ordinarily, I might do that if there was going to be um, sort of clean up process afterwards, um, because you will get splatter by doing that. Um, so I'll just try and put it on straight onto the brush um, in this in this case. And so you're using the more aggressive brush first, I guess. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm imagining that um, this is going to shift um, the worst of the the grime, and then um, the softer brush will just get into some of the nooks and crannies in the in the texture of the gotcha. surface that perhaps this brush won't manage. So this product from CarPro, it's dedicated, I can, I'm, I'm just reading the label from here, but it's a dedicated leather and car interior cleaner. May I steal the bottle off you? Of course. So if we're dealing with a clear liquid, this looks like it's a, what, a litre bottle? Yes, yes, that's right, yeah. Um, and again here, it says shake well, uh, spray onto the surface. So admittedly, if we were doing a clean up afterwards, we'd be spraying onto the paintwork, um, well, on, on directly onto the vinyl, and there might be some splatter, which we'd then clean up later. Obviously, this time we're not doing that. Um, agitate with a soft brush or microfiber, so we're doing that one, and then wipe off with a clean microfiber, um, removing any residue and do not leave on the surface for more than five minutes. So it's probably quite a strong cleaner, this, I would imagine. Crikey, I can already see the effect it's having. Yeah, so that's um, as expected. I mean, you could walk past that car and think the roof's not in bad condition, um, but by doing that, you can see there's actually um, quite a lot of there. grime. Um, yeah, absolutely. And if, particularly if that roof was black, you just would have no idea of the grime that was on it. But, absolutely, um, and I suppose you can tell, if you're, particularly if you're using a, say, a yellow microfiber, um, that will make it more, more apparent as well. Indeed. It's quite yeah. satisfying. That's working really well. I tell you what, I think if we tape off a little area, we'll be able to see what it's like before and after, and then it'll be that much clearer. Okay. Um, so I will just start doing a little, little area. I won't do a big area. There is, in fact, a real skill to taping things. Uh, but thankfully, this is quite an easy task, just doing a nice easy square. Um, and I don't have any taping skills per se, so we're just going to go for a simple system. And I note this is green tape, Tom. As normally I've seen on the uh, detailing photos and stuff, blue, blue tape. Is there any difference between them? Um, it's quite a big subject, isn't it? We've tried really. so many different tapes. Um, and we, we like the blue tape a lot, um, mm -hmm. but we just struggle sometimes with the residue that gets left behind. Uh, not when you've removed the tape, but actually um, you've got compound um, when you're machine polishing that goes along the edge of the tape. And then when you're trying to clean that up, you seem to get um, adhesive um, streaking across the paintwork, which um, you know, was, maybe it was a personal thing, but that was mm -hmm. something that we didn't um, particularly get on with with the blue tape. So we found this preferable because um, you get less residue, less residue. Um, involved in the cleanup. And I suppose that's just another thing when it boils down to the experience of a professional detailer is that you know you, you pick up these things and you, you get to know what things you like and what things you don't I guess. Yeah and at the end of the day if, if it, even if it costs you know 50p more for that roll of tape but it saves you 10 minutes it's a no-brainer. Yeah it? no absolutely. Well I've just about taped up a square. It ain't perfect, it probably isn't even square, but um, I'm sure when we reveal it later on, it'll show the difference of all this hard work. So I'll leave you to it. Okay. Okay.
So Tom, uh, you've laboured away while we've taken a quick break mm -hmm. um, and this is definitely looking much, much better. Thank you. The moment of truth, however, yeah. comes with a peel away. So this is just literally after a uh, Car Pro inside yeah. with a hard brush or a stiffer brush um, followed by a softer brush. Yeah, and then a wipe down. And a wipe down with a yeah. microfiber. So just very gingerly remove this. Now obviously there's a slight concern, of course, that the tape is removing some of the dirt as well. Um, but I'm hoping there'll be a profound difference. So very gently removing this one. And crikey, look at that. I'm hoping the camera can pick this up, um, but there is quite a significant difference uh, before and after doing that. This actually looks really white now. In fact, this is now looking whiter than the white paint. Yeah, we have to do something about that. <laughs> we have to machine the roof now. <laughs> it's one of those things you can't stop. I mean, thankfully the car's just in for these two things, but I can see certainly marks and swirl marks. You'd have a lot of fun with a polisher on that. Mm -hmm. um, so now we've cleaned this. The next step, I guess, to protect it. Um, what are we going to do for that? Uh, we're going to use another CarPro product, and this is called Sea Quartz Leather. Sea Quartz Leather. So that's used normally internally, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it is an interior product, um, but given the um, sort of desire to keep this nice and supple, um, it will work um, well on an exterior surface like this, so that's why we've chosen it. Brilliant. So that will keep this both cleaner and easier to maintain, but it'll yeah. also protect the actual fabric itself. That's right. Um, so I guess we ought to clean this a little bit. Indeed. Um, and then uh, we'll get on and protect it. Okay. Brilliant. So, Tom, what's your strategy with the application of this? Um, so, helpfully, it, it will come with um, a block mm -hmm. and a small applicator cloth that you wrap around the block. And that's, so that's a, a stiff foam block with a softer kind of coating on top, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. It's much softer on the application side. And then you wrap the small cloth around it and then you um, just put some drops on there. And then um, usual story, um, trying to go backwards and forwards and then across and crisscross motion to make so sure. So you're ensuring you've got full coverage, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 And I imagine with the texture top as well, there are certain surfaces you only hit when hitting it from a certain angle. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, um, and so how much of that product, that looks like what, a 25 mil bottle, something like that? I think this one is a 30 mil. 30 mil. And how, how many hoods of this size do you reckon you would cover with that? Um, I would... We tend to do quite liberal applications. Um, I'll probably you'd get three or four, depending on uh, how many coats you do, oh, but okay. I'll probably do a couple of coats on this one. Yeah. Well, that just shows, goes to show, really, because, I mean, how, how much is that bottle, roughly, do you think? We'll find full prices and stuff near for the thing, but it's, what, about 30, 40 quid? Or? Yeah, I was going to say 40 pounds, something 40 like that. 40 quid. So, certainly from a detailing point of view, um, you can see, you know, the cost of high quality products is, is what really does, you know, make a difference and why when somebody says, oh, I'll do your roof for 20 quid, uh, it's a slightly different kettle of fish from doing it properly like this. Well, I'm going to leave you to it for now. Okay. It's already looking quite good. And this one is, a, is a just a, an apply and, and wipe off after it's sort of cured or? Yeah, I mean, it, it says if there's any excess, um, invisible excess, then wipe it off. But mm -hmm. um, if there isn't, then you can actually just leave it. But it seems away. to be absorbing it quite nicely. Yeah, I tend to find on um, some other surfaces, similar products, and they will leave an excess, but this really does. It does soak in nicely. Cool, I'll leave you to it. Okay, thank you. So we've just done the roof uh, and we've come back now to buff off the Swiss Wax Auto Barn. Um, so when it comes to removing waxes, are there any tips and tricks you can give us? Um, I prefer to use a very deep pile um, towel. Um, this one happens to be a Swiss Wax towel, um, but we find that's um, the nicest way to get a quality product off. Absolutely. So again, as we were saying, if you'd put on too much, it would be much more effort, but this is coming off really quite easily. Incidentally, if you want to know when your wax is cured, you can do what we call the finger trick. Um, and essentially, if you just wipe your finger across and that, the wax comes off on it, then you're good. If it kind of goes greasy and doesn't really come off, then it means the wax hasn't cured yet and you need to leave it some more time. So that's looking pretty good. 
Again, it's not perfect. It's about making an improvement and making it as good as it can be. If you wanted it perfect, you'd have to get a new part. And for something like a Figaro, that's quite a hard, hard job, I suspect. <laughs> um, so the next step you were saying is, is as a product you'd like to show us. I remember you were saying you were thinking about a tire dressing. Yep, um, we've got something we use quite a lot of here at Curious Spree called Swissvax Pinot. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tire dressing and we have a lot of very nice cars here, um, premium cars, and um, they look better in our opinion um, if they're not overdressed. Um, so As in a sort of a matte satin finish yeah, rather than a gloss. Yeah, personally, um, a glossier tyre for me doesn't look quite as nice on a, on a high-end car. Um, so we tend to use Swiss Vax Pinot more than anything else for dressing tyres. And we've got a Rolls-Royce, um, which we'd like to demonstrate that. Brilliant. Right Let's yeah. go and have a look. All right. Well, this is a very lovely car you've got here. What's this, a Rolls-Royce Phantom? This is a Rolls-Royce um, Water Speed, which is um, a limited edition. Wow, well, it's, a, it's an interesting blue color. Certainly you wouldn't miss it. <laughs> um, but the nice thing about the Phantom, of course, is it has 21 inch rims um, and it's a massive, great big, what, 50 section tires are these? Yeah, and um, one detail we love on uh, Rolls Royces, modern Rolls Royces, is the wheel centers always stay at the 12 o'clock position. Which They're self-leveling, aren't they? Attention yeah. to detail. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So feel free, how, how, do, how would you apply this normally? Thanks, I'd take a nice um, soft brush. This is a, a Swiss wax brush um, and I'd simply spray it on to the end of there on both sides and then uh, massage it in. So this does actually nourish the tire as well as dressing it. And um, it's a bit strange to start with because you think um, it's going a bit white in color, mm -hmm. um, but just keep working it in. So we think this probably contains a little bit of silicon, but it's nowhere near as much silicon as you get in sort of cheaper products. I guess not, no. And um, it, it just comes up a nice matte color. What I tend to do is then I'll wipe it with a microfiber towel um, at the end. Normally, if we're doing a full detailing job, the wheel is off the car laying flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. And that means we can go in uh, sort of one section of the tread all the way around as the wheel's on the car right now. Um, to do it properly, you would have to roll the car backwards and forwards then to get, get the whole yeah. um, finish. So it's just a, a brush on and wipe off. Yep. And you can see it has it's brought back, it kind of looks more like a, a new tyre from the tyre depot. I think so, yes. Rather than a tyre on a sort of dodgy second-hand car dealer's lot. Exactly, well said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. No, well, I absolutely like that. Shall we move on? Uh, and I've got quite an interesting product to show you. Okay. So you've just shown us the Swiss Vax Pinou tire dressing. Um, I want to show you something. Have you ever used any ODK products before? I haven't, no. Have you heard of ODK before? I have heard of them, yes. Yeah, well, we've got this. It's from our original mega test in, in issue three. And we tested, if you remember, 70 quick detailers. Mm -hmm. And this was one of them. And so this morning I packed this one in. It's a sort of surprise product test. Um, and it, strangely enough, is rather good color for this vehicle. There you go. Um, now, obviously, quick detailer. Um, so what do you look for in a quick detailer? Um, I like it to buff off nicely. Um, so uh, not yeah. smeary. Yeah, some of them I've found you can tell where you've been, which is obviously not what you want. Um, so that, yeah, that's what I would look for. Absolutely. Well, um, I have to admit from a packaging point of view, uh, it's got some nice little touches. So this is a mini trigger, but it's got a little click on, click off, which I think is a really clever little thing. I do, I get quite excited about trigger sprays, <laughs> but I'm strange like that. Um, and as I say, the color rather matches the car. And I'll just give this one a quick sniff, because this is obviously very important. Right, I'm, I'm sensing kind of soap that you get in hotel rooms. Yes. But 100 pound a night plus hotel rooms. Um, so it's an interesting smell. It's, it's perfectly inoffensive. Um, and what do we hear? What do we have here? So Entourage will both clean and protect exterior paintwork. Uh, it works on the interior. Uh, durability is about four plus weeks, supposedly. Okay. Um, and yeah, so it's great for using at shows as a, any quick detailer. Uh, and it goes on top of a wax or sealant. Okay. So on this car, what we've done is we snow foam, two bucket washed, mm -hmm. towel and blow dried it. Yeah. Um, so we think there might be some sort of protection remaining on this from the last time it was waxed. Uh, but apart from that, it's, it's, a, it's a clean surface, even if it's not yeah, decontaminated. It well, we did do fallout remover, didn't we? Yeah, we did, all over the car, yes. Yeah. yeah. There are photos of that in issue six of the magazine, uh, in the showcase section where we're following on this car and doing much more detail about the procedures that we've shown in this video. Um, so I'm going to hand this to you. Thank you. Um, and I'm guessing you want the green microfiber first. Thank you very much. You see, you've got to press the button. There you go. <laughs> 
Normally with quick detailers, we find it's like similar to wax, is that you don't want to go too much of it. You don't want to put an excess on. But at the same time, a lot of what they do is about lubrication. So if you've got a car that's lightly soiled, uh, the idea of a quick detailer is kind of not quite a waterless wash, but certainly in terms of being able to safely remove very, very light dust and stuff like that. Um, so you do need a certain amount of it for the lubrication. How are you finding the lubricating properties? Yeah, it goes on very nice. I can see streaks, um, so hopefully they're going to buff off nice and easy for us. It's most quick detailers are a straightforward wipe on, wipe off. And I can actually see some gloss from my side. I can definitely see a gloss improvement. The car's already, in, as I say, in reasonably good nick from a gloss point of view. Um, and just looking at this microfiber, there wasn't much muck to remove, so we're not expecting to see anything here. Um, I can certainly smell it coming across now. Yeah, and it's coming off nicely, which is what I want. Now this car's got a, a certain amount of orange peel, it's the nature of the paint, it's been resprayed, um, and it is just about on every single painted surface. But I'd say that's made a nice little improvement. As I say, it's, it's one of those, it's a kind of, if you're at a show or if you're out in the open and the car is pretty much perfect, but you just want to give it that last final touch, that's where a quick detailer comes in. Um, and this one says it gives about four weeks worth of protection, which I think very much depends really on your maintenance routine, how many miles the car is doing. Um, but I think that's probably a fair estimate for some, certainly. Yeah, and a car like this, um, I imagine it will have um, probably four weeks between washes, given its duty cycle, so it could perfect. be quite a nice yeah. solution. Absolutely. So generally speaking, rating out of 10? Um, I would give that um, probably a 7 or 8. 7 or 8 mm -hmm. out of 10. I think that's pretty good showing from, mm. from ODK. Thank you very much. Brilliant. So to demonstrate the end result of the quick detailer, what we've done is just sprayed a bit of water over it. And this way you can see how on the left hand side of the bonnet, the uh, beading is inconsistent and it's not really beading. It's more just sort of sitting on there. Um, it's kind of halfway between beading and sheeting. And then on the right hand side of the bonnet, you'll see that the beads are pretty decent. They're quite small. Uh, they're fairly consistent and, and regularly spaced. Um, that certainly shows that there is something on there. Although, as we know, whether or not something is beading does not necessarily demonstrate protection or lack thereof. So a car that's not exhibiting beading could still be protected by a product. It simply depends on the type of product that's there. And also, you can do the back of the hand test. Do not rub paintwork with your fingertips because fingertips contain the, the oils and stuff that are on your hand. Uh, if you do it with the back of your hand, the back of your fingers, you'll be able to feel the slickness. And certainly in the case of this ODK Entourage Quick Detailer, we found that the slickness and the feel of it had certainly improved as a consequence. It's been a fun day here at a curious spree near Stratford-upon-Avon. Thank you very much to Tom Morrison-Jones for hosting us and for helping out demonstrating both products and methodologies uh, on this Nissan Figaro. Uh, hopefully the car, I believe, is going to be transported back tomorrow uh, to Adrian, who's looking after it for his daughter. Um, and it's looking rather better for all his TLC. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this episode interesting and perhaps a little enjoyable and informative. Uh, do catch up with our next episode. We'll be on in a couple of weeks' time.